Hey everybody, Adam with Fanuc here. Say hi to Adam. Hey, I uh, was working with a customer recently and we came across a little life hack that is just too good not to share. Um, this is a it, this is an informal life hack, um, not necessarily a, a training module, but something that you could really use to your advantage. Um, let's set the stage here. How many times uh, when you need to go set up your system and you want to start production, you say, oh man, I got to turn around and walk all the way to the back of the machine or somewhere outside the cell in order to come down and hit my reset and flip the little gate and hit the start uh, button. And then I got to turn all the way back around, work all the way back. Not fun. And then you get back and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot something. I forgot to set up my parts. And you got all the way back and forth. Point being, the start button on these is not always conveniently located near the robot. Now in a previous video that I released, I showed you that you can turn your teach pendant into an HMI and put a beautiful little start button on there. But we found a little bit of a life hack that saves a step. If you want, if you have the uh, teach pendant somewhere, of course my system is auto saving now. If uh, you have your teach pendant somewhere more easily accessible, like let's say maybe on the front of your machine somewhere, put a nice little hanger down here to where this is up front and center, you can actually start your robot from the teach pendant without even setting up an HMI. You can just toggle a bit and have it go off to the races. And let me show you how. It's very similar to how you set up your HMI just without the extra work of getting SharePoint and web expressions and all that mess. So let's revisit the steps that at least get the HMI talking so you can at least do this. So the very first thing you want to do on your teach pendant is press menu, next, system, config. And in there, we need to change your um, remote and local setup Local is the evil button that's way back behind your machine. That's local. So we want to we wanna change that. So the first thing we're going to do is choice remote. That's the same thing you do if you want to start from a PLC or, you know, from some other ancillary input. We need to get that off of local. So that's good. The next thing you want to do is under your menu, setup, and program select, we have a couple options up here. Uh, I like to go other, other, oopsie daisies, other, and then go down here and other, and then you'll have to cycle power. But what that does is when you're not using the run, run, run system, request, run service request or the program number select, when you have it on other, you get the detail to come in here and define a shell work custom name. And you can pick from whatever programs you have written. I have only one program, you might have hundreds. But you can pick what program you want to run as your shell work custom name. So now you have your system config set up to remote. You have your uh, setup select. Uh, set up with your other and your shell work. And if you remember, let's go into our menu, next, system, variables. And you'll remember that on my HMI video, if you've not seen that, please watch it. Inside the shell work area, when we open that guy and we scroll to the very bottom, you'll see a couple things. You'll see the shell work custom name, what we defined on the other screen, that's the program to run. And you'll see right here, shell work custom start. And what this is, is this is the bit that signals the robot to run that program. So when this guy goes true, 
it will immediately start running that. Now here's the downside of me trying to teach you guys on RoboGuide is RoboGuide won't let me actually execute a program from Shellwork um, because I have to go hit the little play button in the tree up here. Um, so I can't fully execute this for you, but try it. Let me know how it works because, um, well, and stay tuned. We're not done yet. You're looking at the video. We're halfway there, buddy. But try this and you'll see it does work is whatever program you have here, you go here and when you flick that to true, it'll only be true for a brief, brief moment, like a second or less. And the controller will automatically bump it back to false once the robot is running. So you do not need to pulse it. You do not need a timer. It just needs to go to true. Now, I was talking with my customer and he's like, that's cool. That's great. I can start my robot here. That's, that's awesome. Just walk in and hit F4. Life is good. He says, but I don't want my operators digging through system variables to start the robot. Can we make this easier? Heck yes, we can. Um, so here's what we're going to do. First thing you're going to do is go to your I.O. screen, go to your flags right here, and we're going to set up a flag as your start bit. So flag one is now our start bit. Yay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to build some logic on when and how to start. So I'm just going to say start logic, name whatever you want it. Go into your detail. This is important because we are going to remove motion from it. You've seen this before. Highlight your group mask, asterisk. Now there's no, there's no motion involved in this particular program because this program just needs to flicker a bit for us. So let's end that. Inside the start logic, we are going to have a pretty quick and easy if statement. And we're simply going to say if flag one becomes on. So if flag one start bit turns on, then let's do work. Instructions. Uh, IOs. I lied. Instructions. Registers. <laughs> uh, bottom one, you need the one with the parentheses because that allows you to use a parameter name. Within that parameter, and I'm going to cheat here because I will forget it. <laughs> I advise you to take a picture or uh, write it down when you're playing. We're going to put in that we want the shell underscore work dot dollar. Don't forget the dollar. Never forget the dollar. That's why we're all here. Cust start. And I want that to become a constant of uno. So what that does for me, and uh, note that I did not choose on or off. I chose a one because ones and zeros correlate with true and false. So if that flag comes on, then shell work goes to a one. Uh, if we turn a flag on, we uh, just like the, the lights in your room, you uh, better turn them off on your way out. So uh, we'll say flag one equals off. So if the flag is on, start work, turn off the bit. And anywhere you find yourself making an if, you better have an end if. There's our magic right there. And now remember, the, the, the controller will automatically turn the custom start. It'll turn it back to a zero, a.k.a. false, as soon as the robot starts production. So we don't have to worry about that. We just have to flick it on. It'll handle the off. But we do need to reset that. So now let's go into our menu, setup, over here to our BG logic. Let's choose our start logic program, enter, and tell it to run. Now that start logic is running in the background, uh, we know that that little if statement will always be looking for the flag to start our work. Um, well, then what I love to do is I go to my I.O. screen, I press menu. Um, I've already done this once before, uh, so pretend that you don't see that. 
But if you press and hold one of these blanks, it'll save whatever screen you're on. So menu, and now you've got a shortcut. So you could be over here, la-di-da, I'm playing with data, life is good, I'm in my program, I'm doing fun business things, being a businessy adult, uh, and then just hit menu, flag. And it's a quick shortcut to get you here. Uh, and then all you'll have to do is bump the on and your robot's in production. To show you what that would look like, let me split the screen here. You can see my custom start bit down here in the system variables. When I'm here, uh, if I hit that to be on, you didn't even see it go because remember our BG logic, boom, boom, turned it on and off super quick. Flag on, flag off. So we didn't even see that flicker but the command for the robot to run was issued. And this all happens so immediately fast um, that you won't even see any of this happen. You'll just all of a sudden be in production. So basically all you have to do at this point, once you have your BG logic set up, your flag set up, and all your system variables and settings set up, you just teach your operators, say, hey, when it's time to run, make sure everyone's happy, you know, everyone's in a safe place, you can function aboard all, everything's in its home position. Then all they have to do is menu, flag, on. And when they click that button on, which I just did, I don't know if you heard my mouse click, as soon as they hit on, that robot is gonna be off to the races, hence right there. Um, so literally, that is a hack of no HMI, no panel wizard, no running around the sides of the machine to go hit buttons or anything bonkers. You just hit a flag and life is good. You're starting production. Um, if you guys know of an even easier way, please let me know. Put it in the comments. Um, you know, share it with the community. Um, if this worked, awesome. If it didn't work perfectly, let me know in the comments because again, I'm dealing in the Robo Guide fantasy land and I can't quite show it to you, but. If my memory serves, this is exactly how we set it up with the, with the customer that I met. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope these uh, tips and tricks make your life better. Um, and as always, have fun coding. Thanks.